guys, you know what? This deserves a two guys, guys, guys. I know what you want me to talk about, but first, before we jump right into Budapest Trophy, we need to talk about two things. One, the Asian Open, and two, the latest news of, oh my God, no. <laughs> so first, we have the Asian Open. Let's start with our favorites, the ones that I think are the fan favorites right now from what I see on the internet for pairs going into the Olympics is Sui and Han, which I believe also the correct way to say the name is Sui and Han. Correct me if I'm wrong. But Sui and Han literally won. Of course they did. They won the pairs event at the Asian Open, and this is good, but then again, they didn't really have any real competition. So it was like fine to see. It was good to see that their programs, I think they'll be using one of the programs. I, to be completely honest, I'm not a pair stan, so I'm not so familiar with all their programs. So I just saw these programs and I was like, they feel familiar. Are they the same? <laughs> like I couldn't tell if they were the same ones or they were new ones. But like I said, they didn't really have a lot of competition. It was a no brainer that they were gonna win here and what's gonna be interesting is later on in the season when we see them come up against potential competitors who are at their same level and people who can actually challenge them because Sui and Han are, or Sui and Han are at a competition all their own when they're doing it's not a national event but you know what I mean like not a world event however they must be feeling a lot of pressure right now because they really are the ones to lose you know how there's the ones to win well they are the ones to lose this Olympics because they they are in a home crowd and just the pressure of being in your home country let alone with the fact there's not even going to be any other international crowd just Beijing mainland China crowd allowed like they really have the weight of their whole nation on top of them and I'm pretty sure that in China they are the favorites to win and they are the favorites to win in my heart but I don't know if they have it so securely in the bag they always seem to pull through when they need it most and hopefully that's what's going to happen here because I really want them to pull through like they have to bring a gold medal to China right are you kidding me like that's the it's the only way and the pair that I'm most interested to see them compete against is the newly acquired Tutbrita team Teraso and Morozov because now they have the Tutbrita name behind them I'm trying to see how the judges are gonna you know put them up against each other also not to mention that they're actually improving compared to their last seasons so Teraso and Morozov not only have the Tutbrita name behind them which we know has a serious pull with the judges but they're also improving so Sui and Han being a up against them and of course there's Michina and Galiamov like there is serious competition from the Russians but I'm interested to see how the judges are gonna view the Dubrica team versus Swain Han when the time comes and for me I really hope that Swain Han can pull it off and get an Olympics in their home country in front of a home crowd like that would be the Olympic moment that we're all waiting for in China I don't think is just waiting for is expecting <laughs> like they're expecting that to happen so Zouin Han all power to you please stay healthy and de-stress then we have the ladies at the Asian Open we had Mai Mihara winning and then we had Kaori Sakamoto second and the light of my life Kaori was looking amazing Mai Mihara also looked great and while the ladies was a really close race like literally there's only a points difference between the first of Mai Mihara and the second of Kari. In the men's, Yuma absolutely destroyed. He killed it. He literally positioned himself really well, not only in an Olympic season, but past the Olympics because Yuma Kagiyama really is the future of Japanese skating for men's. And the fact that he's still competing well and I feel like his federation really truly is behind him. It gives me a lot of joy because I do see him as being the main guy for years to come once, I know we don't want to talk about it, but once Yuzuru Hanyu starts to slowly step away from competition. But I can't even speak on Yuzuru Hanyu because we have never seen that man. I feel like I forgot what he looks like. He is a ghost in my mind. Like, Yuzuru, where are you? What are you doing? How are your programs? How are you? Have you eaten today? Like, I need something. Give me a smoke signal, anything. But yes, Yuma killed it, doing super well. And then the ladies, Kaori and Mai, Mei, Mihara, I don't know what happened there, are doing well. And it's a very close race for the ladies. So I'm just happy that the light of my life, Kaori, is being consistent, is being good and just spreading joy throughout the world. Then, the latest news of, oh no, what now? Rika Kihira, speaking of Japanese ladies, has announced that she has pulled out, withdrawn from Skate Canada. 
And let me tell you, Kihiro depression, we didn't even know what that was, but it is here. It is upon us and I am feeling it. Like we were already extra worried for Rika Kihiro because we really haven't seen or heard anything from her besides the rumors, which I believe are not even rumors anymore. They're confirmed that she is injured. And besides that, all we got was the great news that she transferred to Brian Orser, Team Brian Orser, Papa Brian Incorporated, you know. And besides that, we haven't really heard anything from her. And the fact they have been so quiet about her transfer into their team makes me believe that this is the reason why. Because she is injured and things are not going as well as they should. And that makes me really sad because I was already really worried and now I'm extra worried because I really want Rika to get there because honestly her 2020 program with the one-handed cartwheel was iconic and is such an Olympic moment. And if she could just do that at the Olympics, it would be everything. It would be amazing. Also, does anyone else feel like most of the skaters had Olympic level programs during the 2020 and even 2019 season? Like they should just all go back to older programs. That's how I'm feeling right now like there's not a single program maybe besides the french like whacking program yeah that's the only one that i can think of that i like genuinely enjoy and think like this is gonna be an amazing moment like i honestly can't think of another single one like i know cruella truso as cruella is gonna do great because of the sheer amount of quads but we can put that in any program like the program itself is not astounding the most olympic programs i've seen is alegria and rika kihira which now that i say it out loud uh i feel like i just have a predisposition to cartwheels <laughs> and i think cartwheels are olympic i don't know anyways moving on i really really hope that rika kihira heals soon and that she gives us a great performance in the future because if rika is anything she is a performer and having her at the olympics even though i see that chance diminishing by the second the more we don't hear about her i really hope that she at least is in the conversation to get to the Olympic team in the future. Because the way that Japan has all this blossoming talent, especially in the ladies, is just making it harder for all the girls that we've known and loved and cheered for. Now, the thing that you guys are all waiting for, the reason why you guys are here, you probably were expecting to see my face today by the way that this Budapest trophy turned out. But no, not yet. Maya has yet to get to the Olympics, even though I believe that girl can. So let's jump right into it. Budapest trophy. First, anyone else feel like the Tutbritsa sweep, which everybody was so sure and so worried about and so complaining about, is looking more like a dream than a reality after this competition? Like, I feel like the Tutbritsa sweep is not gonna happen. I don't even feel like it might happen. I feel like it's not going to happen. I don't see three girls that is like, yes, of course. I see two, Trusova, Valieva. The third spot is wide open, and I mean wide. And let's start with Kostornaya. Why are you saying? Kostornaya. Well, she was supposed to be here. She pulled out because reasons that are not explained. I believe maybe the generic answer of she needs more time, she needs to practice more, or she needs rest or whatever. But again, it's just, am I in Costa depression or not? I need to know. Like, Kostornaya right now is teetering the edge of is she a real contender or not because we really haven't seen her give a performance that makes her a shoe in Trusova showed out at Teskate. Camila Valieva every other day she pulls it every other day she falls but we know that she can do it Kostornaya has not returned to the Kostornaya that we all fell in love with during that season in the 2018, ruling everything and everyone. But you know what? Kostor depression is not even the main thing of my worries. Right now, we have to focus all our attention and all our love and support and all our hopes and prayers into another Tutberitze girl, which I will talk about later. And later is now because Anna Sharakova. <laughs> Wait, actually, before I go into Ana Shevakova, let's talk about Sofia Samadurova a bit. She was here. She was Samaduroving it up. She fell, but somehow seems more stable. I don't know. She, I felt like she was more proud of herself after this competition. So I feel like she did better. Now, Ana Shevakova. So Ana Shevakova, I came into this competition ready to be just terrified for her because of the broken toe a few months ago. And all of a sudden, I can't even think about the broken toe because her neck. What is going on with her neck? I don't know if it was a tape. I thought it was a bruise, but now people are telling me it's a tape. She has this giant, like, I don't know, thing on her neck. I don't know. All I'm thinking is, we gotta worry about something else too. The toe, now the neck. Like, when I say breaking down in front of me, I don't literally mean I believe I'm gonna see them breaking down in front of me, but I feel like that's what's happening with Anna Sharakova. I'm literally seeing her breaking down in front of me. And I know I'm being dramatic. It's not like she bombed. It's not like she was like flailing around the rink. Like, she did well enough, but she didn't do any of her quads. She fell when she attempted to do any Ultra C element. And the bruise neck tape thing is not giving 
given me any sort of comfort that things will get better. When I saw her, I just thought, oh no, please Lord, oh no, because it's history repeating itself. People said that her story was gonna be like Medvedeva, where she was gonna get to the Olympics and was gonna be usurped by the younger, stronger girl that was Camila Valieva, who's a girl that people compare to Zagitova. But this story might be even sadder because Sherbakova might not even get there. Sherbakova might break beforehand. Her foot might get fractured just like Zhenya's beforehand. And I know for a fact that Sherbakova getting second at this competition was not part of the plan because Gleik cannot hide his face expressions. Like he literally is just like, mm. <laughs> like he really can't hide it. Like he's just like looking at things in disbelief. He's just sitting there like mad about life. Again, this might just be my own like hate projection coming on, but he did not look satisfied. Felicia Rocco has always been like his soft spot and I believe he was not happy and this was not part of the Tutberitze plan. I feel like he was thinking, oh God, how am I gonna tell Tutberitze that Maya Kromik just <laughs> beat Ana Sherbakova at this damn competition, but she did it and it happened. Also, can we talk about how Olga Rybienko, oh my God, how do you say her name? Is it Olga? Olga Rybienko, <laughs> I feel like is not getting paid well by Team Tutberitze because at this point, it feels like she's making the dresses ugly on purpose. If you don't know, she is the lady that does all the Eteri girl dresses. And every time I see one, I'm just like, how is it that the Eteri girl dresses range from hideous to meh? Like, what is Sherbakova wearing? The red one, not that bad. The other one, what is that? <laughs> I don't understand. And meanwhile, this is the same designer that has Senya looking out here like a goddamn forest fairy. Like she definitely does her job depending on how much she's paid. And Tweet Blue is not paying her well. Sorry about the tangent. But <laughs> I just, I need everybody to realize that this is insane what happened at this competition. Like, Shirokoa lost to Maya Kromik. Say that sentence a year ago and you would have slapped me in the face. And they don't know how to react. Anna doesn't know how to react. Gleik doesn't know how to react. And I really want to know what's happening behind the scenes at Tito Peritza because it does not seem like they have their eggs in a basket, their coins in order. I don't know how you say these metaphors, but they don't look like they have shit together. That's what I'm trying to say because I feel like the only thing that's going according to plan is maybe Trusova getting it together after coming back from Plushenko because even Valieva is struggling, especially with her triple axle. Like the Tito Peritza girls are shaky. All of them. All of them are shaky. Even the Paris team. Taras Romoroso or Shaky, like none of them feel like the invincible Tutberitze product factory that we have been kind of known and familiar with. And yeah, that's how I feel. After seeing Shrabakova, it just felt like history is repeating itself over and over again. And at this point, if Team Tutberitze is not factoring into their plans, the Terry expiration date, they're just dumb because they do this to themselves and it happens like clockwork and then when it happens, they got the same face of like, what happened? You happened. You. All right. I feel like <laughs> I just ranted too much. Let's talk about our winner. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. Maya Kromik or Maya Kromik. Kromik? Kromik. I don't know. Y'all choose which one was good. <laughs> She is truly the woman of the hour. She is the fighter of all the Atari girls. Nobody, including myself, believed that she was a serious contender for the Olympic team. And my disbelief was to the point that I said that if she actually makes it on the Olympic team, I would make a face reveal. And right now, I feel like I need to get a haircut because that face reveal might be coming sooner than we think. For me, Maya, this competition had what all the other Eteri girls have been missing. She skated with heart. She skated with passion. Just the first few openings of her skate, you can see that intensity. That's just, I am here to prove myself. I am here. That same thing that Tuktamisheva has, which honestly might be the reason that Maya doesn't get to the Olympics because I feel like if the Russian Federation has to choose Tuktamisheva or Maya, they'll go with Tuktamisheva just because she has more experience. But then again, they love to fuck Tuktamisheva over. So they might go with Maya. Olympics favors the naive. So I don't know. I'm going ahead of myself. Point is that she skated like she needed to. Like she needed this, like she needed people to know that she's here. She's connecting to this program. She actually likes it and I'm starting to enjoy it. Even though this Roxanne version will never be better or equal to the one and only Roxanne that Tessa and Scott did. But I am feeling it because she is feeling it. She is inspiring something in me that all the other Tutberitza programs are not. And it's solely because of Maya, because the program is not that great. We all know this. 
And I just have to say, Maya, I am sorry for doubting you. I'm sorry for doubting your strength at surviving the Tutteritze machine because honestly, I did not think you were going to make it. I did not think they were going to be behind you as much as they are. They gave you good content and you have elevated it just with your own presence and essence and vibes. And if we're honest, like it's shocking that she's even survived this long with this great group of girls because not only does it feel like she's surviving the Team Tutteritze machine, she's beating it because this definitely was not part the plan like you can tell from Glyke's face that she was not meant to win this competition they really thought that Anna Sherbakova was somehow gonna pull that Sherbakova strength that she always pulls off I mean that's the reason why she is three time in a row Russian national champion with hyperventilating and everything so Maya props to you because I do not know how you did it honestly <laughs> I had no faith and now I got faith you took me to church Maya also the amount of support that she got from the crowd was astounding I'm so happy that people are behind Maya and her journey because if she actually becomes a fan favorite that might actually help her case for going to the Olympics because there's nothing that the Olympics loves more than a good story and right now she's an underdog that is looking like she's about to prove herself right and people love nothing more than cheering for an underdog and if the crowd is behind her listen that is infectious that can make also the judges get behind her even team tutperitza get behind her and glyke's face is gonna change from sour to happy although i doubt that will ever happen but if she's consistent and the empress somehow loses her consistency although i wish no knock on wood <laughs> let's just say she might be on the same level as the other girls for being in that third spot because that third spot is wide open and right now she has more of a chance than Anna Zhervakova like Maya is landing quads I mean she was not perfect don't get me wrong she did fall I think on her first jump during the free but she's landing quads Zhervakova can't let quads anymore maybe she'll get them back who knows Kostornaya is having trouble with her triple axle Truso was not consistent Valieva is not even consistent Maya is the only girl that's going up <laughs> like, do you know how crazy that is? I don't know, I'm just enjoying this ride because it is not going as everybody thought. Tintu Peritze needs to learn how to, like, it, like you're making these things happen. Do you realize that, Tintu Peritze? Like, it's not like you didn't think, like, you didn't know that Shabakova broke her toe. <laughs> like, it's not like you didn't know that Kostornaya has a little bit of attitude and is not scared to dish it back. It's not like you didn't know that Drusova is not consistent enough. So why the face when Maya pulls through? Because you did know that Maya is a fighter and she's here to fight. This is insane. I could go on forever. Point is that Maya won and she has a better chance now to get to the Olympics. And the fact that we might only see one girl of 3A at the Olympics, that being Drusova, is crazy. Because just two years ago, two, 3A was an invincible wall that nobody could reach. And that's why this is all insane because it changes so quickly and the same thing happens over and over again and people just keep denying the truth like it's not happening like the Atari expiration date is something that I, that I invented out of thin air no it's something that people said on the internet <laughs> so much so that it is part of the history and it has been verified over time and time again and yeah this was the budapest trophy maya Kromik won over shabakova sofia samadurova ended third i feel like i forgot to say that and shabakova ended second also can we say how this program is like you remember how i said that shabakova is better with a gimmick this gimmick of like good sherbs turning into evil sherbs is not enough this program is still boring and it's still meh okay you know what i'm just gonna stop the video because i could keep going forever as always shout out to natalia leslie scotty and timothy and oh wait up i know it ain't i know it ain't the stallion you know it's your girl it's your boy jordan yes now we have five vip shout outs leslie timothy scotty natalia and jordan and if you want to support me merch twitter and patreon are all down below and as always i will talk to you guys later bye bye